My brothers and sisters, when we say we love someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have we ever thought what exactly that means? When a person loves you, why do they love you? When a person gets along with you, why do they get along with you? What is the underlying reason? So if we are to look into that underlying reason, we will come to realize that the, the, the purpose is either good or bad. And if it is good, it could be something to do with bringing you closer to the Almighty or something that would be taking you further away from the Almighty. When someone knows you or when you know someone, ask yourself, why do they know me? How do they know me? And what do they want from me? And if you know someone else, the same questions need to be asked about them. Why do you know them? How do you know them? And what do you want from them? Because when there is a person whom there is a lot of goodness from, and you see that they are close to the Almighty or trying. You know, we will never be able to tell exactly uh, what level of closeness a person may be to the Almighty in reality. But their actions, their deeds, their words would display to a certain degree to us what may most probably be the case. And from this, I'd like to protect myself and everyone else from uh, the issue of hypocrisy, where we see people sometimes outwardly very religious, but within they cheat, they deceive, they bad mouth. You wouldn't believe what they do behind closed doors in their own homes. And they actually have such a bad reputation, yet outwardly they seem to be very religious. Sometimes, in the case of the male, sometimes you find they would be praying in the mosque, in the masjid, in the first saf, the first row. They might be reading lots of Quran. They might be doing lots and lots of good deeds, so to speak, ex external good deeds. But their internal is absolutely dilapidated. So in that particular case, we need to be careful from two things. One is from being deceived by people like that. And two is from being a person like that who deceives others. So we ask the Almighty for protection and we should do something about it. But when we get to know someone and we see that they are trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are good people, their character is outstanding because two things make a good human being. Number one is their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we've spoken about that just now. And number two is their outstanding character and conduct. If the character and conduct is outstanding, the person is actually a lovely person. You know, uh, if a person has brilliant uh, character and conduct, we can overlook a lot of other things because if they make a mistake, they would actually acknowledge it in, a, in the most beautiful way. They would be still someone who speaks in a very respectful way. They would acknowledge their error. They would help others and so on. They wouldn't be uh, filled with pride and arrogance. Uh, and that would be to deny uh, that they were wrong. You know, when you stick to your guns, even though you know you were wrong, it's a sign of true pride <laughs> because that's what the Hadith says. Those people who deny uh, their faults, they're, they're filled with pride. They deny the truth, actually. That's what the Hadith says. And those who despise others as well, they are people who uh, are filled with pride. And then sometimes you have people who have uh, authority, power, wealth, perhaps sometimes they have good looks. They might have a little bit of influence here and there. They may have a few contacts. If that develops arrogance in them and pride, then no matter how high they are, we are not getting along with them or we don't respect them rather people tend to respect their wealth they tend to respect their authority they tend to respect what they have and this is why i say why do you know this person sometimes the answer would be i know them for no other reason besides that they bring me closer to allah that is love for the sake of Allah. I know them for no other reason besides the fact that when I see them, I'm reminded of my maker. I become a better person. I have this positive vibe. I actually uh, feel so much better. I feel closer to Allah and they don't draw me closer to themselves, but rather to the maker himself. And this is why I remind my colleagues as well, those who are, uh, you know, uh, guides who guide people towards the straight path uh, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the students of knowledge, the scholars, etc. saying that we need to be people definitely who do not call towards ourselves, but rather we call towards the Almighty. Because at the end of the day, and in fact, right from the beginning, the power was always that of the word of the 
Almighty, not of my word or yours. The power was always that of the word of the Prophet وسلم, not of mine or yours. So it was Allah and his Rasul and it is and it shall be forever that the power lies within in terms of the words of revelation. But when it comes to us, we are mere messengers and we should not be calling towards ourselves, rather towards the cause, towards goodness, towards polishing ourselves. That's why if I don't know you personally, it's no big deal. But I do know that I want you to know Allah and I want to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is someone you would know for the sake of Allah. They did not take a penny from you and you are not expecting a penny from them. That's something interesting. Now. In life today, we find people have their jobs, they have, you know, different things. When you have your boss, sometimes you respect him because you have to, not because you would like to. Sometimes you respect him because of his position and you know him because of that work. You know him because of his position. You know him because of that uh, fear factor that you have. You might lose the job, you might not get your money, etc. If that man is outstanding in both ways, in the sense that from the angle of spirituality and religion with character, he's outstanding. And if the person is also outstanding in terms of uh, the, the work ethics and the respect they have, it's included in the character. But in that case, you actually love them for the sake of Allah and you also have a connection with them for something worldly, which is secondary. The primary reason is for the sake of Allah. But when you get a person who has nothing besides their money, besides their power, authority, besides a little bit of worldly fame that they may have, and you are knowing them or greeting them, even though you know they have character and conduct that is not even acceptable, and in no way are they close to Allah because of their derogatory words, because of the way they deceive people, they cheat people, they lie, they actually falsely accuse others, they, they create problems and issues, they are very vulgar, they are absolutely you know, mischievous in their ways and so on. They are far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that particular case, you don't know them because of Allah or because of their goodness or because of their religion but rather your relationship with them is solely and only for money, which means you're actually connected to their wealth and not to them. Now think about it. There are going to be a lot of people in my life and yours whom we know we're good to, we're kind to, just because they have something not religious, not close to Allah. In fact, there, there are people who are not good sometimes, but because of something we need a business deal, how many of us have business partners who are rotten to the core in character and in their relationship with Allah, but we happen to respect them. We overlook things because we know there is some money, money, money screams. It doesn't talk anymore. Subhanallah, it actually yells. So what we need to know, let's be careful. Don't compromise your faith just based on the fact that someone is, uh, you know, I might lose a bit of money. I might lose a bit of wealth. This is why the Prophet ﷺ told us, Man nasa bi sakhitallahu anhu wa anhu nas. Whoever, uh, displeases the Almighty, whoever pleases people, whoever pleases people through the displeasure of the Almighty, then the Almighty is displeased with them and very soon he will make the people also displeased with them. Which means you stand by your, your word, you know, you stick to your grounds and you need to make sure that you understand and realize Allah comes first and uh, everything else comes thereafter. If a person is good, mashallah, if they're not good, subhanallah, may Allah protect us from their evil. We need to, uh, we need to protect ourselves from the harm of this person. And that also the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says it is a sign of the hour, a sign of the hour. What is the sign of the hour? When a person is honored because we fear their harm and yukram rajulu makhafata sharri. You know, when a person is honored, fearing that if you don't honor them they might harm you hello hello how are you you know salam salam you're okay everything well oh wow mashallah lovely etc when you know this person is actually not worth even speaking to but if i am a little bit uh, you know uh, not so forthcoming with them they might harm me so i'm nice to them because they may harm me if that's the case oh we have actually entered territory that is not good at all we need to polish ourselves we need to make sure that we do something about it because we must be genuine. You don't need to be nasty to someone, but you definitely need to uh, protect yourself from being a hypocrite. So I've come across people who 
get along with others, they will side with injustice solely because the person who's unjust has money or the person who's unjust has a little bit of fame or has some form of authority or the person who's unjust and wrong uh, is a little bit more powerful in one way or another, maybe physically or otherwise. If you're siding with injustice because of that, you have sided against the Almighty. And then when the Almighty comes with his own way of descending upon us negatively, we have none other to blame than ourselves.